Hey everyone, it's me, Aaron, and this is Comic Class, the show on this channel every single week where we just geek out about comic books. And I gotta tell you, over the years of doing this show, there have been a lot of topics that I've been wanting to tackle that I've been forced to keep on the back burner, but today, I'm finally getting to talk about something that I've been wanting to cover forever. This is a subject that has been on my mind for the longest time and it's something that's just gonna make you feel good. It's going to be something that's going to make you happy to read comics again. Today on Comic Class, we're going to be discussing, huh? What's that? Ah, I've just been informed that all comic books have been canceled. Okay, I knew this day would come. Good thing I prepared. Time for Plan B! Hello everybody and welcome to Sports Class, your home for the hardest hitting sports stories of the day. And today's big story from the wide world of sports is... Nothing! Nothing at all. Sports have also been cancelled. There's, uh, there's not even anything on this page. Totally blank. Okay, well, I guess we can go back to talking about comics now. Folks, you remember how last week we did a show where I recommended some good comics that you could binge read for cheap over on Comixology so that way you could get them without having to leave your home? Yeah, you might want to go back and watch that in case you missed out because it looks like none of us are going anywhere for a while. Yes, as billionaire and political con men begin to tell you that we should all leave our homes and go back to work, everyone with doctor in their title continues to tell us, don't do that. Stay the f at home. So I'm going to listen to them and stay the f at home. However, as many people are doing the responsible thing and remain in their homes to try and cut down on the spread of the deadly coronavirus, this is having a major impact on businesses, especially small businesses. And when talking about small businesses, you have to bring up comic shops, which this week received some rather unfortunate news. You see, many local comic book stores have been struggling to do business at this time, knowing that if they took two or three months off, they probably wouldn't be able to come back. But this week, Diamond, the company that handles all distribution for comic book stores, shipping Marvel and DC and every other company under the sun's new weekly releases to stores, as well as keeping them stocked in trades and figures and merch, announced that they were going to immediately suspend any new shipments, effectively leaving your local comic book store to just sort of sit there. Now, I want to make this clear, this video is not me coming in here and saying, how could they do this? We know how they could do this, it's not exactly safe to go outside right now. Lots of businesses are doing this. In fact, honestly, many of us already saw this coming. It wasn't a matter of if new comics would stop coming out, it was more of a matter of when. And I have to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting the answer to be two weeks after our show took a month long break. When I said we need to take some time off to reformat everything, I wasn't expecting our comic book show to come back and find that there weren't any new comics. Also, this isn't a video talking about how by Diamond holding a monopoly on the comic book distribution method, they always kept local comic book stores dangling by a thread that could have been cut at any time, and they always refused to let local comic book stores adapt to the changing marketplace, keeping them dependent on their same old outdated distribution method. I'm not going to be talking about that today because A, that is a far larger subject than we have time for today, and because B, it really doesn't feel like the time to come in here right now and go, you know what you should have done was, yeah, that just feels like incredibly bad taste. However, it is totally worth mentioning, Diamond is and always has been really bad for the comic book industry. No, today is more about addressing the bigger concern, which is, okay, comic book stores are just going away until all this blows over. All this being about three months at the best estimation. So what could that mean? And I'm no fortune teller. I have no idea what all the answers are. The only answer I have is that if someone out there tells you they have all the answers, they're probably lying to you and trying to take your money. However, even if I don't have all the answers, I sure know a lot of the questions we should be asking right now, and hopefully by addressing some of these questions here today, I can help everyone out there, well, not feel easier about all this, but at least maybe prepare and come to terms with the possibilities. The first thing that we have to address is what's going to happen to local comic book stores, and sadly, all signs are looking pretty bad right now. 
Many stores that aren't very financially secure have been trying to stay open during the nationwide quarantine because they know that if they shut down for three months, they're probably not coming back. We just saw that recently with GameStop, a company that had been crashing over the years, refusing to close its doors, even going so far as to say if the police tell their employees that they have to close, they should tell them, no, I can totally stay open because I'm an essential store. However, GameStop at least had new games coming out to look forward to, and that was really the thing that kept local comic shops going. Each week, there was something new to look forward to, and when people were going to be stuck inside their homes, they needed entertainment. So, weekly new comics seemed perfect for that. And to the credit of many local stores around the country, they stepped up, providing home delivery and curbside pickup to keep customers out of the stores and help everyone stay safe. But now, that flow of comics is going to stop and nobody is going to risk contracting super flu so they can go out and buy month-old books. This means many of the stores that were staying open are now going to be forced to shut down, and as I said, this is going to last for about three months. Very few comic shops have the money to stay open for that long with no income. Now again, at the time of this recording, there are many unknowns about how the government is going to address all this. Could rents be canceled? Could there be some sort of monetary assistance distributed to Americans to help with their expenses? Could there be some kind of a small business bailout on the way that could help these stores? If any of these happen, then yes, we could see these shops survive. But at the time of this recording, the relief plan that is going through the Senate is mostly comprised of a blank check to giant corporations that don't care about your local comic shop and will be providing minimal actual assistance to small businesses. I don't know what I expected. And I do know that many companies, including the big two, have already announced plans to assist stores with buyback policies or even reducing the cut of their profits, but those plans were made back when they believed these stores would still be receiving their books. So I don't really know what exactly they can do to help at this point. I mean, AT&T and Disney could announce plans to provide comic shops with financial assistance so they can remain in business till new books come out. But let's be real, AT&T doesn't care about DC Comics. They just care about the shows and movies that they can make from their books. And Disney has shown more interest in Marvel Comics with Kevin Fahey being put in charge of the publishing branch. But even they aren't going to go that extra step. So, yeah, it's... Time to brace for the bad. However, this doesn't mean that this is going to be the end of comic book stores in general. Yes, over the next couple months, we are going to see several stores shutting down. However, as soon as things slowly start to return to normal, which again is going to take months to even begin happening, but over the next couple of years after that, we are going to see several brand new stores opening up because people are going to need to get their comics from somewhere and nature abhors a vacuum. So if Marvel and DC and Image all say that they're going to hold off on putting out brand new books until everything goes back to normal, and Diamond reopens, then yes, they will have new books, and there will be that demand for those new books, so there will be a need for new stores to accommodate that demand. However, there's a really big if in that scenario. If Marvel and DC and Image decide to hold off on putting out new books until everything returns to normal. What makes us think that they're going to do that? At the time of this recording, no word has come from any of the big three companies about their plans to respond to this because they were probably just as shocked about it as we were, but even if they came out here and said, no, we're doing the right thing for these stores and we stand by them and will not release our books until these stores can carry our titles once again, again, this isn't going to last a few weeks. This is about a three month minimum we're looking at, and that is a long time for these companies to not put out titles. There is a really solid chance they could backtrack on that promise after a month and say, you know what, uh, on second thought, what's the harm with putting a few titles up on Comixology? And when it comes to the distribution of entertainment, most printed books have moved to the digital marketplace. Most video games have moved to the digital marketplace. Every movie and TV studio in existence is trying to get their own streaming service with exclusive content solely for that digital marketplace. 
Comics are really one of the only media sources out there that still sees much higher success with physical sales over digital. And I get it, I prefer digital, but I've spoken to many of you out there who have made it very clear, no, there's just something about physical books that I appreciate more. Yeah, here's the thing, I used to say that too, and now I am strictly a digital fan. That conversion can happen. So let me ask you, what's going to happen if all the companies out there just say, screw it, we can't wait anymore. We're putting all our books out again and until Diamond comes back, they'll be digital only. What's going to happen if all that goes down? I know some of you might say, well then I refuse. I will refuse to read these books digitally and I will wait until they come out physically again so that way I can support my local comic book store. Hey, that's great for you. A lot of people aren't going to do that. A lot of people are going to switch over to digital. I've mentioned this several times before, but the comic book industry runs on FOMO, fear of missing out. And a lot of people out there can't stand the idea of even going a week without knowing what is happening within their favorite books. I just said a lot of comic book stores remain open during this time because even in the face of a pandemic, most people out there said, yeah, I know it's dangerous out there. I still need to pick up my weekly releases. I still need to know what is happening within that book. So if all of a sudden they can't pick up their physical books and they can only read them digitally, yes, switching to digital releases is scary. It's not nearly as scary as wading through a fog of Corona. So a lot of people are going to make that switch. A lot of people are going to jump onto that digital bandwagon. I know some of you might say, okay, they'll switch to digital for those three months, but as soon as all this returns to normal, then they'll go back to reading their physical releases. Yeah, there's an old expression, 30 days makes a habit. So if it takes 30 days to form a new habit, what do you think happens in 90 to 100 or more days? If Marvel and DC decide to continue releasing books on schedule in digital stores during the quarantine, that will forever change the face of comic sales around the world. And I'll be honest with you, I've been saying for a long time, we need to have a discussion about the future of digital comics and talk about how Marvel and DC approach them, but I knew we weren't going to need to have that conversation for a while. We did a video a few months ago about how Marvel and DC could help combat piracy, and in order to do that, the first step would be to make a larger push for digital sales. But Marvel and DC don't want to do that because the first company that comes in here and says, yeah, digital sales will now be our top priority, would effectively kill local comic book stores, and neither of these companies wanted to be the guy who killed the local comic book store. I described it as the entire comic book industry being in a Mexican standoff where nobody wanted to pull the trigger. But Diamond just popped their head into the room and said, oh, uh, if one of you doesn't fire soon, you're going to start losing a ton of cash. And I can guarantee you, suddenly those trigger fingers got a little itchy. I mean, hell, we've already seen this with movies. As theaters around the country have closed down for the quarantine, we've seen many major films hanging straight to video on demand, with Amazon now promoting them as early access, like they're an in-development indie game on Steam. And if major movie studios are willing to do that, you don't think Marvel or DC will too? Two weeks ago, we talked about how fear is used to sell comics, and in that video, I mentioned that a lot of people on YouTube love to come in here and say, the comic book industry is dying, so that way they can get your views and clicks. And at the end of that video, I said, guys, the comic book industry is going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Yes, we have seen collapses before, but we survived those collapses. So no matter what ups and downs come our way in the future, the comic book industry is going to survive that. It's going to stick around, it's going to be okay. And I stand by that. I still fully believe that. But you'll notice in that video I didn't say it would remain the same forever. Change is the only constant in life, and as I mentioned, the comic book industry is really the only entertainment industry out there that still relies so heavily upon physical releases. This could be the thing that changes all that. This could be the thing that makes these companies say, you know what, we really need to start focusing more on digital sales. And I'm not saying all this to scare you guys. I don't want to do that at all. But I know that you guys have questions right now. And as I said, I don't have all the answers. No one does. But I can look around at the rest of the entertainment industries out there and I can see what they're doing and what they've been doing over the years. And I can start to make predictions about possibilities of things that could end up happening. And I do feel like it is important to discuss those possibilities in order to better prepare ourselves for them. 
However, these are not the only possibilities out there. There are other things that we could see coming from this. For example, maybe Marvel and DC end up releasing an entire storyline or an entire event in single issues on the digital marketplace during this giant nationwide quarantine. And then when everything reopens again, rather than releasing all those single issues directly to the physical store so that way everyone can catch up on them there, they just release the trade. And people go and they buy the trades and they say, oh, I kind of like this more. I kind of like just getting the big physical release all at once. And then comic book stores stick around and they prosper just by selling the trade. We've seen that happen with other bookstores out there that no longer carry single issues. They only carry the trades and that's been working out just fine for them. They still sell a decent number of just the trades at regular bookstores. Maybe comic book stores might end up going down that route. Uh, or we could see another possibility that I saw someone discussing over on Twitter, that maybe during this time, Marvel and DC could pair up with Comixology, and rather than selling physical releases, they end up just selling the codes to these stores. And then those stores can sell the codes for the digital books directly to the customers online or over the phone, much in the same way that GameStop, while selling physical releases of games, also sold just the digital codes for games. There are many different outcomes that we're facing from all of this, but these were the things that my mind initially went to, and I know it's all scary. Change often is, but considering everything that's going on in the world right now, I don't think that any of us really needed another thing to be afraid of. So I'll tell you guys what, as long as everything doesn't collapse within the next week, as long as we're all still here and everything seems like it's still going okay, Knock on wood, I have a wood floor, in case you guys couldn't tell what that was. Uh, knock on wood, in case everything goes all right within the next week. The next week, I promise you, we'll come in here and we'll just try and do something positive. We'll try and do something uplifting, try and do something that celebrates the comic book industry out there, try and do something that just makes us all feel good about this. Uh, I do just want to come in here at the end and say, yes, a lot of comic book stores are going to shut down during this time but a lot of them are going to remain open. And I don't mean they're going to actually have their physical stores remain open. I mean, they'll be selling stuff through their website or over the phone. So if you have a local comic book store and you want to continue to support them, even if it means buying older books, get in touch with them. See if there is some way that you can support them during this time. See if they do have a website, if they do do uh, orders over the phone. Uh, just try and reach out to them and see what their unique situation is because every comic book store is going to approach this differently, but they could all use your help right now. Uh, so thank you guys very much for tuning in. Just like I said last week and just like I'm going to probably say for the next couple of weeks, take care of each other out there. You know, stay indoors, wash your hands, just use your best judgment about everything. Uh, I want to thank you all for tuning in right now. And normally at the end of the show, I would come in here and plug our Patreon. But at the moment, as we discussed throughout the rest of this video, a lot of people are going to be facing tough financial times coming up. So I'm not going to come in here and ask for your money. But if you do want to help support this channel, I know that over the next couple months, a lot of people are going to be ordering things through Amazon. So over the next couple months, I'm going to be putting a link to a comic that I really enjoy down in the description of these videos that will take you to that book on Amazon. If you buy anything on Amazon, it doesn't even have to be the book that I am linking you to. If you buy anything at, on Amazon, as long as you start by going through that link, we will get a cut of the profits. Right now, that is going to be the best way to help support this channel and a lot of other YouTubers out there without having to spend any extra money. So if you know that you're going to order something on Amazon, just check the description in some of these videos. And like I said, a lot of other YouTubers are going to be doing that. So just keep that in mind. Uh, it really will be the best way to help, support, uh, to help support this channel. Screw it. I got all the way through that before I jumbled something up. We're not doing another take out. There. We're on something goofy. I had to get in here at the last second. Bye, everybody.